Right, we'll do this gun boy delay. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Not waiting. <laughs> Camera's recording. Camera's recording. Burning daylight. Gee, it's a tough crowd. Okay, it's um, the gun boodle that I tie is, I tie it in two colours, both green foam and yellow. Because as you know, sometimes your beetles can be all different colours, but they're the two colours I use. But I must admit, I've got a preference for the green one. Is it as soft as that other stuff? Yes, it's used? still fairly soft. Yep. You're yeah, very soft. Yep. So your four, is that four mil or? Yep. Three, oh, three, three, mil. three mil something, yep. And there's the fly there. Now, you'll notice, I don't know whether other people do it, I put legs underneath mine, as in, and I use deer hair, spun deer hair. The reason why I did do that is I'll talk through as I'm doing the film as I'm doing it. I was on Arthur's one day in a good beetle hatch, and um, couldn't make out. Um, my mate was fishing, and I'd see this fish come up, come over the top of the beetle, <coughs> head lift, nothing. <laughs> Happened three times. So I thought I'll trick you. We'd actually pulled up on the shore to have lunch. I thought I'll trick you. So I, I, I got the binoculars and put right on the gum beetle. And as the fish came up to take the beetle, the beetle just washed away in front of him, mm. his mouth, because mm. of the, you know, Awake. of the weight, mm. just washed away. Uh. And he didn't see that. He thought the fish had taken, lifted. I said, he didn't, didn't get it, washed away from him. So I came home and Tony Dell and I talked and this is when I come up with putting some friction underneath it in the deer hair. Okay, I just tie this in a little bit around the bend of the hook. And look, the width of what you want to tie it depends solely on, on your, um, the hook that you're using. Always use on beetles of any sort like this, where you've got big bodies. A uh, gentleman talked to me yesterday about wide gape hooks. This is a B160 wide gape, which is a wide gape hook. Is that a 12 or a 14? Uh, this is a, a 12. Write that down, B160. B160. It's in the paperwork, isn't it? No, it's not. Uh, I think it might be, yeah. It's what, uh, Brian? B160. And to do that in a 14 as well, or? No, I don't do small. I just do them in the twelves because yeah. gum beetles are all the one size. Well, within reason. Okay, you spun deer here? No. Neither have I for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so you've doubled it already. I've got to get some of that stuff. That's for sure. Some must. And and you don't need a lot of it. You don't need a lot of it. Whatsoever. This is the idea of this double one. It keeps you, keeps them apart for you. Okay. Now I use ground, brown or green. Doesn't matter. Then you come back with your fingers and hold it. Okay. Spread it out. There it is. It's done. Yep. It's done. Too easy. Right? And you just... You can use, if you want to, you can put a hackle on there, right? Mm -hmm. Which will do, but I found with the hackle, there's still some, I did try a hackle on it, but it's still some movement in it. You want them a bit stiff, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, well the stiffer leg seems to, seems to be a bit more friction there and hold it. I'm certain it, and you have had the same thing happen, have you? I've seen the fly, I've seen it where I was fishing, a dry fly, and the fish comes up, yep. and the little wave in front of his mouth pushes the fly away, if you, and the fly's yep. still sitting there, and, you know, oh, I'm about to lift, oh, hang on, the fly's still there, and then yep. I've watched it other times, and I've seen it happen too. Yeah, his, his yeah. head, the little bulge behind yep. the back of his head, um, Gets rid of it, sort and of thing. And I think it happens more often than we think on dry flies, where yeah. you think, oh, the fish is taking it, but he, he just misses it. Like the fly moves out, and he, 
you know. Yeah. And he's just missed it, yeah. He's just, he hasn't got it at all. Yeah, you've only thought he's had it. And of course, if it's out, if it's out a reasonable distance, we were fishing in amongst the trees. This is, look, this is an absolute, it just stretches out a little bit, so you get a bit of shine on it. See that? Mm. Okay. Now, you can also get it with a little with a little flat head on it, right? Give it a pull, push it, push it in against the eye of the hook. Nice. Got a little head on him, yep. right? Then just finish him off. Be careful putting sole, uh, headset on a lot of uh, yeah. foams because you can melt it, all right? And now, now, if you push that back, you can still see the, the eye of the hook there is still perfectly clear for you to get your line in, okay? And then all I do then is um, take it out and right trim. Next to the, right next to oh, the Oh, sorry, points. sorry. Um, What I do then is just press them in the down direction to spread them out a little bit, and there's your there's your finished product of your gum beetle. It's, it's pretty good pattern. Good pattern, isn't it? Good pattern. <laughs> yeah. mm. Pretty simple, huh? Simple. Mm. Floats like a cork, mm. and as I say, I tie it in two colours.